I don't know. I just felt like that was a false premise. And again, I, I would like to agree with Carlin. It wasn't, I, it wasn't a false premise. Like I said, I if you want to help us, tell people I not to live like you. Wow. Watch my videos and come to that conclusion when I say not to and i advocate against it i think that there are a lot of do you not understand blair there's there's no middle ground with her there's you're, you're not going to bridge that gap right you're, you're not going to be able to be like well you should understand that like i i actually believe a lot of the same things as you okay i i do not believe that trans women should be in sports i i, I don't believe in, in uh, hormone therapy for children i like i you know the same and like she does not want you to exist all right that's like that's the level of hatred you're dealing with right now there is there is no middle ground here okay All right, everybody, it's time. The heavyweights have assembled, they've prepared. We have in these four corners before you four of the most brilliant minds of our generation here to discuss the nuances of something that, of course, is a very difficult subject to broach. But surely they are going to treat it with the careful care that it deserves. Christian conservatives battle pro-LGBT Republicans. Interesting. Well... If ever there was a dumpster fire. Here was the first one to celebrate me being. Harlan. Harlan. Um, well, also, I celebrated um, that you were banned on Twitter I, I because say, you repeatedly I, tweeted I that my say, husband should be deported, Lauren. And he's now a legal I'm, alien. I don't really know how much you know about me, but I'm probably the most vocal anti children transitioning person on the internet. It's what I'm. Right. Almost, I, it's, well, I, I, let, I let you speak. The best thing you can do for us is I, grow out your mustache and tell people not to live like you. I mean, I knew it was going to be bad, but oh wow, just going to put a little content warning at the bottom here, because I, I feel it's going to be rife. There's been a lot of arguments on Twitter recently where people cannot decide what it means to be right wing or what the future of the party is. If you don't know why that's important, well, just look around you at the radical leftism, all the insanity in the culture, and a president who borrowed an election, and a country who wonders, what is our future, and who is- A president who borrowed an election? Is that, is that the safest way they can spread the conspiracy theory now? Because this is on YouTube, this is the blaze. So is, is that how they're just like, hmm, let's, let's skirt this one. Is going to save us from this absolute madness? Well. A lot of people seem to disagree, which is why I brought a panel of guests on to talk about what the future of the right wing looks like and how we win back our country. If we can bring them on the screen, uh, I went ahead and I invited on a myriad of people. I have uh, Carlin, <laughs> Bor he's right. called Carlin Borisenko. Well yeah, done. Awesome. Commentator. We also have uh, Lauren Witzke. Uh, she ran for uh, uh, Congress in Delaware. We also have Blair White, YouTuber as well, and John Doyle, YouTuber, and they're all here to answer these questions. So let's uh, talk a little bit about this as we get into this. Starting with Lauren, um, how do you describe yourself politically? Okay, so I am socially conservative. I'm advocately, I've always been economically populist. Uh, economic populism is the future of our party. However, preserving social conservatism within the Republican Party um, is a real passion of mine. I'm very pro-family. I'm very pro-life. Uh, my whole motto is I just like to win and save babies. So that's what I do. Awesome. That's uh, like, that's just so weird. I wonder if you introduce yourself and you say that. It's like, what are you up to? Oh, I save babies. Yeah, I'm the baby saver. What do you do? Blair, go ahead and tell us where you lean politically. Yeah, every political quiz I've ever taken matches center right so that's me i don't have sort of the popular story everyone loves of like i'm a former liberal i'm a lifelong republican always voted that way and yeah that's me i'm definitely a little bit less socially conservative and uh that's where i land john go ahead it's a pretty clear I mean, blair i could pretty much just be like i'm i'm a bigot i'm a bigot i'm a trans medicalist bigot who basically enjoys the grift the grift is good the gift is, it's been pain wonderful, you know? It sucks having to put up with all the bigotry and the transphobia, the, the general transphobia and bigotry that, that most of the right shows towards me, but you know. Copy-paste uh, between Lauren and myself, I think, fiscally populist and uh, socially conservative. Carlin, are you... <laughs> <laughs> 
fiscally popular. <laughs> you fucking Nazbol. I love when people say that. Fiscally populous, but socially conservative. Yeah, I, I want to. I want to oppress people, but at the same time, I want some. I don't know, some more popular economic policies to go through. That's that's all. I want them to. I want them to be healthy and looked after, but but oppressed, but oppressed. Yeah, I'm a little bit different in that. Um, I you know, some people say I'm a former liberal. I'm actually a current liberal. I have never stopped being a liberal, even though I did leave the Democratic Party. Um, I politically on my political compass test, I tend to be right in the center, and I frankly just. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you didn't know, uh, she's the one who made a PragerU video about people were mean to her in her knitting circle. So that's why she left the Democratic Party. That's that's her entire ethos. It's become such an ethos that, as you can see, she likes to put all her work of knitting behind her. Because, like, yeah, that's that's me. I'm I'm the meme. I'm I'm the meme. You know, she's she's the Cody Johnson meme. Awesome. So as we get into this, I want to let you know something important. This is a, the first question we're going to jump into, which is, what is the future of the right wing? Right. If we're going to win a war, if we're going to fight the left, we've got to figure out who's on our side. And there's a split of trying to figure out if the future of the right is a conservative, moral, Christian party that is a strong nationalist background, or if it's this big tent party full of liberals, libertarians, disaffected left, etc. How are we going to do that? Is it A, by building a stronger, conservative, Christian moral party, or is it B, building a big tent party of libertarians, the disaffected left, conservatives, etc.? Like with the questions, we'll try to go in the same order. We'll start with Lauren. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm really confused why this is a discussion about the future of the right when we have a liberal, actually, this is a Democrat, with one good opinion. Uh, we also have a transgender on here. Uh, you know, I don't really think we should be giving a platform uh, to this kind of gender. Wow, she's extreme. This is like goddamn fire and brimstone. I guess, yeah. Is, is this supposed to be the political compass of the right? <laughs> which is a uh, gateway drug to pedophilia. You know, I absolutely oh, disagree. Wow. Oh, man. Extreme transphobia. Holy shit. This is like, I am I am straight into gay, conver uh, gay, conver uh, gay conversion therapy. Sorry. That, that's wild. That's wild. What, what, what made anyone think this was going to be a good idea? Like, oh yeah, no, this will, this will, or maybe that's it. They were just, they don't give a fuck about any of this. It's just like ratings. It's, it's for the money. We were the party of traditional marriage. We were the party that opposed gay marriage. We've always been that party. We've always been the party of family. We won handedly in 2016 without the LGBTQ vote. We started losing when we started compromising. So I'm really curious why uh, people who are libertarians, I mean, you have a party of freaks who love the free market that you can join, but don't come into our party and try to influence it because that is how we are losing. And in case you haven't noticed, we are losing. Uh, you know, they are now advocating for chemical castrations for children. We're spotlighting transgenderism at C. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. She's just, just oof. man, that's, that's wild. And, and yeah, no, y'all are, y'all are losing elections uh, because like, the demographics are changing because because no one buys this shit anymore the old like the old timey ku klux klan-esque like you know right-wing christian conservative voter base of the united states is not the same it used to be so yeah that's why you're losing there's <laughs> i mean I, the only compromise you've made is on sensibility um and i am a traditional christian conservative i believe in family i believe that family is the foundation of everything that this country was founded on and no, I do not believe that Man, we should be Old compromising Testament. our values and spotlighting a lifestyle Old that Testament. is a gateway drug to pedophilia every single time. Oh. And you cannot deny it isn't because it's here. Blair, would you respond? I think that there's a difference between you spoke sort of to gender ideology, which is definitely rampant on college campuses, definitely taking over culture. I think that's different than just people who as individuals may technically be gay, lesbian, bisexual, any of the above. Um, and I think that it's possible to fight against gender ideology with while holding true that there are going to be people that are just different in life. I definitely am not here to speak to the future of social conservatism because that's just not my lane. But as far as the party, um, I think that a big tent is most likely the future. I think that speaking knowing my generation and a lot of people my age, which is 
mid 20s and, and Gen Z a little younger. I think that they voted for Trump the first and second time or just the second time um, because Trump kind of ushered the party into an era of a little more secularism. I don't think he was overtly religious. I think to an extent he was a little performative with with religion and with prayer and things like that. Um, and I think that attracted a lot of new voters. And um, I'm not sure that, you know, going full force religious social conservatism is really the future. John, can you respond? Yeah, I think that the concept of a big tent movement is basically the sort of intra-party democracy that prevents us ultimately from being effective at actually wielding power. And this could date back even to what's referred to as the Reagan coalition, where we tried to unite social conservatives with libertarians, uh, with fiscal conservatives. And then we created something which ultimately didn't last in effect, where we're now okay, on the back let them, foot let them with fight and break up gender there. identity. And even now we're trying it, you know, with pandering to different minority groups, different interest groups, which will never give us more than 8% of the vote, for example. So sure. Sure. I think yeah. that to actually try something different would be to legitimately establish a strong party with the values that we're nominally in support of and actually wielding the power effectively when we, we are given the chance instead of getting into power and then doing nothing and trying to pander to these groups thinking that we're going to own the libs and take their voting base away from them. Yeah, Carlin, I'm interested to hear your perspective because obviously this would be a, a question that would pertain to you directly since you admit that you're a liberal. And you just registered as a Republican. Since you admit. I mean, give us your thoughts. <laughs> I did. Well, the fact Crime is, is that MAGA liberal. is not a religious movement. MAGA is a political movement. And in order to win elections, you have to win votes. The fact of the matter is that Donald Trump has never cared about gay marriage. Their it was never something so that he scuffed. was against. Dude hung out at Studio 54. Why would he care? And so I am on the side of winning too, Lauren. I'm on the side of winning elections. The fact of the matter is that Donald Trump created a Big Ten strategy that brought 10 million more people to him in 2020 than he did in 2016. And if we go back and look at the history of the Republican Party and when they lost the culture war the first time, Ronald Reagan offered oh, thanks, a Big Ten. He said, everyone is welcome phalanges. in this Big Ten. He won two terms. George H.W. Bush followed him. The Republicans were in control for 12 years until what happened? The moral majorities tried to swoop right in and started legislating Christianity. And that is when they lost the culture war. That is when they started losing voters, when they started trying to legislate their religion the first time around. This is not a question of religion. If you want to do whatever you want to do in church, that's fine. Go talk to your church elders. Go talk to your deacons. Exclude anyone you want from your church. But the fact of the matter is that I would really like if the Democrats didn't control everything. And in order for that to happen, we need to win. And that means building the broadest po po possible coalition of voters that we can. And that's what I think we should do. Lauren, that's pretty much opposite. I got to say, if she's fighting for a broad coalition and uniting, then I want her to fail the most in this debate. I, it's one of those rock and hard places because I don't want to start feeling bad for Blair, Ry Blair White just because this is like an out and proud bigot. Like in terms of bigotry, right? There's there's different degrees and there's obviously, there's the people and I've said it, the old timey Westerns, for example, who would just like, they would see a black guy and they would scream the N-word at him and then everyone would be like, oh yeah, that's that's the white racist. Now I, now I know the white racist in the movie so I can identify the white racist and that, now I know that that's bad and they never really address like systemic racism, right? Or historical racism or, or, or maybe Maybe the influence of capitalism and what it had and played in into the slave trade itself but that's the difference you see right before you so this is the old western you know this is this is like i will scream the n-word at you kind of racism right but all four of them have their own varying degrees of racism and and you know this is probably going to be more of the i have to play uh very very careful with with what i say here because obviously i happen to be a member of the lgbtq community but at the same time i don't want to uh give in to this pretty extreme fundamentalism that the person in the top right is saying of what you brought up and what you were saying um could you could you please respond to that yeah so you know donald trump he did do things that made the church have to make excuses for him his globo homo initiative uh ended up losing him a significant amount of the christian vote and we are i'm sorry I, it's 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 been a while for me i haven't i haven't dipped into this far of the extreme right in a while what what, what is the the globo homo initially tell me more tell yeah please yeah, do go are you going to like does is are they just in circles where that doesn't need to be explained like you can just put that out there and then everyone else is like mm-hmm mm okay the base of this party we make up a huge portion of this party a way bigger portion than the liberal libertarian sector of the party no matter how much they want to tell you um you know so him making those compromises is probably a big part of why we lost you know we lost the house 
in 2018. You know, in 2017, we had the House, the, uh, the executive branch and the Senate, and we still failed uh, on conservative issues. They because of the Globo Homo initiative? That's that's the reason you think all what refused to stand up for life. You know, they still passed a budget that um, actually made us forced Christian taxpayers to fund Planned Parenthood. You know, so every vote lost on social conservative uh, consult social conservatism is, you know, OK, sorry, the global homo agenda. Or woke capitalism is the notion that big corporations, politicians, neoliberals in particular, and other groups like nonprofits are driving a new world order agenda, often refer referred to as the global homo gayplex. <laughs> the reason as to why big corporations become political this way is strongly debated. A catchphrase often used by alt writers to describe part of this phenomenon is "go woke, get broke." Okay, so I know I know the "go woke, get broke" part of it, but I I thought that was not just because of the gay agenda. I thought that was because of everything, right? What, what, isn't that because on top of everything else, you've got that representation in film? Uh, more women are are given starring roles that are non-sexualized. Uh, more, uh, you know, uh, non-white individuals are given, uh, you know, prominent roles in Star Wars and all this kind of stuff. That's what I thought was part of the "go woke, go broke." I didn't know it was also part of the the international cabal of homosexuals, which I've now learned. Thanks, thanks to Lauren here. So it's it's not just the gay agenda; it's the gay Jewish agenda. Understood. So when homophobia ain't enough for you, but so is anti-Semitism. When, when you want them both, you know, you, you got to have both at the same time. But I don't think you'll you'll get quite the same experience as as just being purely focused in your bigotry. Like I, I think if you if you really hone down on it, it's kind of like it's kind of like when you you mix a conditioner shampoo, right? You, you you have them both in there in essence, but it's never it's never quite the same. It's not going to give you the same wash. We are significantly more. We are the party that was established in traditional marriage. So I'm curious when the liberals and the transgenders decided that it was their duty to come and infiltrate our party to make it successful because we were doing just fine. Um, we started actually losing votes when we started pandering. Uh, we lost a significant amount of our base, uh, enough to make an effect and make a dent into uh, the electorate by true. compromising our values. The only way forward is to stay true to our values that we've always been and established on and win with them. You know, it's the weakness. People value strength over anything else. And when we started showing weakness and compromise, that's when we started losing. Um, and I don't think that is something showing that we should strength. continue. I think that we should remain the global the party homosexual of Jewish Jesus conspiracy. Christ, the party of life. The party that the celebrates party family and makes it as easy as possible for Americans to I, get like, married. How did you misinterpret the New Testament so much? It's, it's because she's too focused on the old, right? She, she hasn't read the new quite a bit. But like the message of Jesus was not focused on all this shit. It wasn't like the family unit is one man and one woman exclusively. They can only have consensual sex after the fact that they have been married. And then the women shall never have miscarriages or abortions of any kind. And so saith the Lord. N none of that's in there. That's 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 all old timey brimstone. Why would I celebrate a lifestyle that uh, people can't reproduce? You know, you can't reproduce. You just can't. Um, you know, so having families, uh, that is the future of the party. <laughs> like, we started losing when we started right. compromising. Big Tent okay. is a lie. Yeah. Um, Lauren, it let me is, jump in there real fast and give, give Blair a chance to respond to that. Sure. I think the concept of more people infiltrating a party isn't necessarily what has happened. I think that the modern left has shown its hand to such an extent that people are just being extremely turned off by it. Um, I, again, being... I know some people have been like, I feel sorry for Blair White in this situation and I don't like feeling sorry for her. I was like, yes, to a certain extent, just the natural empathy goo that I think all of us ooze is obviously it flares up when you're, you're seeing someone who's so extreme in the top right corner. And at the same time, this is a little bit of you reap what you sow. Like if you've made an entire empire, because she has over a million subs, right? If you've made an entire empire and you basically enriched yourself by vilifying other people your entire career like you make trans people's lives more unsafe so at the same time like it's no surprise that the company you keep is going to be quite this atrocious i've never had a moment where i entered the party and then had plans to change it from within i think that every american has a right to vote in any direction that they choose um and I think especially over the next four years of the Biden presidency, there's probably going to be a lot more people who are uh, red pilled, I guess, is going to be the term um, and wanting to vote, you know, in the opposite direction of how things ended up in November. And I also would say, you know, Trump got the most votes of any sitting president in history. I think that's true. Right. That's right. And um, 
I think there's a reason for that. I think what I spoke to earlier was the push towards more secularism. And I think that while... All, all of them, uh, all of them delusional. Like n no one pushed back against that. In fact, you got excited. You were like, oh, oh, we're talking conspiracy theories. Oh, oh yeah, this, this, is my, this is my jam. Yeah, yeah, go off. Social conservatives and religious conservatives still voted Trump because it was the right direction. And like you said, they did make a lot of excuses and compromises on their beliefs. Fascist bingo. Yeah, um, we, I think we, we all would have lost. Really, and Trumpism is the future of the party and the future of success. I'm also one of those people that, I don't know, this might have to be edited out for YouTube, but I'm not completely convinced that the election was won by Biden by completely um, legitimate means. So we can say it was um, I think what? You can say it was borrowed. <laughs> you know what's funny is, hey, uh, thank you, thank you for answering my question. I, I did have a question at the start of this. I was, I was curious. Why, why would you say that? And I was like, well, I want, and then, yeah, no, okay, thanks. No, I appreciate it. You can't say oh, stolen, yeah. but you can okay. say the election was borrowed. <laughs> um, and so even though yeah, Biden won, I still think Trump is the future of of the right in general. So, okay, John, why don't you jump in there? I think that's correct in that Trump is the future of the Republican Party. But what's interesting about that um, is that during his first campaign and even his second campaign, he really didn't touch on LGBT issues that much. I mean, you know, he, he held up the flag, I think, at a few events at the advice probably of people like Jared Kushner. But if you look at where his voters actually sit on the political spectrum, oh, they're not the right wing libertarians that, that a lot of big donors would like the party to be. They're actually and we all hate Jared Kushner for reasons that are self-evident. Actually, basically authoritarian in the center and so if you look at where they poll on issues such as like gay marriage versus traditional marriage or like transgender bathroom issues like whatever they're all like very uh i guess you'd say authoritative and, and conservative in that and that they're in support of traditional and socially conservative policies and so that's where the momentum in the party is and so if you're going to come over off the vote goof. For Republicans for the sub you agree appreciate with their that Welcome on foreign policy or fiscal policy or what have you that's all in fine, but what we can't do is start to compromise. And say <laughs> That's so like, true. I like. I, I. I was just not even going to comment on it, but I was like, okay, there's there's a couple things going on here that needs that needs some attention to be paid to. One, if you're streaming from your house, you pick this setup, so that's this is on you. Also, fucking, what you doing here, buddy? Work on your trims. Third, is this a window in front of a concrete wall, or is this just boarded up? Oh, I think it's boarded up for the sound, or maybe he doesn't want to reveal his location. Okay, that makes more sense. Still, this this was your choice. Like, you have time beforehand to set this up, right? It's like, okay, you're gonna be, we're gonna be live streaming this big debate, you know, this is the big debate in the conservative sphere. You can come over here, and we're actually gonna pander to you as well and give you positions at CPAC. And I think it's interesting because a lot of people that are trying to join the, the Republican Party or the conservative movement and then bring to light more of these like LGBT issues are basically showing their hand in that they're not actually conservative. And I'm not speaking about you guys specifically, just like the rhetoric that I deal with online, because fundamentally the idea of like, LGBT issues is about the enshrinement of total equality, which is fundamentally not a conservative idea. Conservatives believe in hierarchy and natural law and, and the idea that we can have total equality across the board for different types of relationships or different types of marriages, quote unquote, is just fundamentally not a conservative idea. And so if we want to have success. Whose idea do they think that is, though? Like who, like in this weird straw men of the left, they're like, well, communism basically means that you want all people to be equal and everyone to be the exact same. You basically are the Borg. That's what you communists believe. Goddamn commies. Like, that, who's ever said that? Like, even Jordan Peterson was pushing that the other day. Jordan Peterson was going off about how, like, uh, do you don't have any problems at all. Every single one of them wants equality of outcome. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just not something that's completely... Po how, is, how are we ever going to... And you're just like, no. No one is saying that. Like, uh, do you think the identical equality of outcome for every human being, that, that, that makes absolutely no sense. Like, what, just every single person going to have the exact same job and then have the exact same partner in life and then do the exact same thing and say the same things and shit at the same time simultaneously? Like, no one wants any of this. In the future, as a party, we have to actually, like, maintain a strong footing on what it actually means to be conservative, which we haven't done in the last 70 years, I'd say. Yeah, so I'm going to kind of tweak this a little bit to you, Carlin. Um, as, as that question that he said, right, is like, this is the question a lot of people ask on the traditional right, is that the right has been defined, uh, the right has been defined as being a conservative party. And that has been traditionally what it has been. Now, you say that you identify as a liberal, but you are a Republican. I would say that's more of a new development in the party. I'd say that it is, uh, you know, related to Trumpism, to MAGA, or as Lauren calls it, the Globo Homo movement, which I will spit out my coffee when she said that. I, I find all this stuff quite hilarious sometimes uh, but with it's just so funny it's so funny just like you know 
coded messaging for the alt right talking about global Jewish conspiracies and then blending them with homophobia. It's it's really it's really funny. It's cool. I'm glad I'm platforming you right now. <laughs> that being said, you know if we're gonna take the big tent party uh, approach, right, and we're gonna bring in all of these people that are uh, of different uh, viewpoints, like yourself, what what is this conservative party conserving? And how is it any different than, let's just say, being a liberal party from 10 years ago? Well, right now, it's not conserving anything because they don't have any power because they lost elections. But I do want to uh, speak to John's point specifically in that he used the magic word, which is pandering. The left panders to the LGBT movement. Trump did advocate for LGBT policies. He did so by appointing the first openly gay member of the cabinet, which the left likes to forget about all the time. He did. I think, I think liberals pander a little bit to the LGBTQ community. I think corporations pander exceptionally hard. To the, uh, to the LGBTQ community for profit. I think the difference between liberals and Republicans though is they're, they're less concerned with them trying to actively kill you, trying, trying to actively oppress you, trying to pass legislation that could effectively endanger trans kids' lives. I think I think that's the big fundamental difference. He did support this community. He just didn't do it in a way that was pandering. But again, like I, I'm a liberal because I believe in individual liberty, individual freedom. I'm very concerned with preserving specifically our First Amendment values and, and all the amendments specifically, but the First Amendment's really my jam, which again, does not allow for the state to legislate based on one religion's specific values. But if we want to talk about religion, we can talk about uh, a verse from the Bible, which is 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 2, which says, I urge then, first of all, the petitions, prayers, and sessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, she came with for kings and for those in authority, Bible that we receipts. may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And I bring that up because that is the only place in the New Testament that really touches on the relationship of Christians to government. And what does it say? It says they should pray for the the people in leadership so that they may live peaceful and quiet lives. Go right to Lauren after this. I, so I what does that mean? It means Lauren, what, that what we should think? be Respond. working on electing a government that allows people to practice whatever religion they want and to live peaceful and quiet lives in godliness and holiness. And the only way that we can do that is by creating a broad coalition of voters who win elections. That's what we should be talking about first and foremost. Oh, light her up. Is light how her up. we win elections. Take her down. Um, I'm, before we go, I'm going to go to John because John was no! John was sort of laughing during that. And so why are you laughing? I was I was humored by uh, the biblical substantiation for having more gay people in government. I, I just thought that was kind of funny. But uh, no, I, I don't think that like even you push back on what I had said about the, the pandering with, well, Trump appointed these people and he appointed these people. So he was actually like, you know, serving the interests of the community. It's interesting because, as you noted, the left will still ignore that because they control the narratives and they control the media. And so really, no matter what Trump does to pander to that, however, just gonna quickly push in the left does not control the media who where, what who yeah no I, I think you're trying to say liberals conflating the two again but even then it's not exclusively liberals who control the media either i mean there's many media empires some of the richest human beings on the planet are media conglomerates Rupert murdoch for example Any percent of the what is it three percent of the voting demographic isn't actually going to serve interests and i i just don't think that the reason trump didn't win in 2020 assuming the election was totally legitimate was because he didn't uh serve the interest Dank of the lgbt techno, community thank enough. you i mean trump won Some in because of immigration, because of free trade, and because of foreign policy. It wasn't at all because of uh, social issues as it pertains to, like, you know, the interests of, of gays and transgenders or what have you. Um, and then as far as the, the biblical substantiation for it, I mean, it's outlined, obviously, in, not only in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, like, very clearly that sexual immorality, which under the umbrella would be homosexuality, is wrong. Um, but you seem to be alluding to this idea of, like, the, the individual in, in their private home and things like that when you talk about, you know, people living in a free society to do what they want and not, you know, causing any problems. But what's interesting about that is that was the argument that during the, the movements in the 1960s I and think 70s, all of it because it's, including the sexual revolution, it's like, that allowed a lot of this stuff I, to have a I, 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 Okay, this is just, this is me with anecdotally, anecdotally. This is anecdote andy there's no evidence to back this up i think all of them want to say things like t-slurs except they know they can't on youtube live so they've been told that this is the only word that you can use uh, without us getting demonetized for example because otherwise it's like it's hate speech and bigotry so that's why they struggle every time because they're like mm. and, then, and then it's like uh, uh, okay i'll pronounce it this way that's 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 completely without any factual evidence to make it back it up i have nothing to know uh, nothing to base that on, but that's that's just me reading into it. Which ultimately would usurp power away from traditional Americans and 
traditional social conservatives. And I just think that that's basically a myth because there's really no such thing as a private individual in, in the privacy of their own home because you are one person. And so any actions that you take in your house are ultimately going to reflect. Oh, yeah. You no, trans people would be too in the woke. World. And then it's also kind they of want the bare minimum to not people be People don't off. want to be confided in the privacy of their own home or what have you because that almost presupposes that it's something to be ashamed of. And people don't like that. And so what happens is then they start taking to the streets and they start having parades and they start to infiltrate education. They start to infiltrate institutions such as the American Psychiatry Associ uh, Psychiatry Association. And then what was it? 2015, June of 2015, the Supreme Court decided that five minutes ago, uh, marriage can be between two men. And now we're here on the back foot with issues like, hey, maybe kids shouldn't be taking prenatal hormones. Or uh, can, can we jump in at that? Oh, uh, here we go. Now we're about to kick it up. Wait, wait, I want, Elijah, yeah, I ahead. want to jump in there because Sorry. I want you like he, John just fundamentally misrepresented something I said because I specifically chose Timothy or one Timothy the two verse one and two because it has nothing to do with homosexuality that's why i specifically chose that passage it has to do with the relationships christians have with their government now if we want to talk about how the bible deals with homosexuality what i would like to focus on in the fact is the fact that there are multiple different arguments for different interpretations of the bible i'm not a christian i'm not a bible scholar but i do know that there are multiple different interpretations for that and instead of getting into the nitty-gritty about what it says in that area i want to focus on the fact that again this is an argument for the First Amendment, for religion to not be the, the dictator of a political movement. If you want to... You know what's wild about this is, again, yes, it is kind of like them separating the political compass. But the other thing is that, like, this is 21st century inner conservative discourse. Like, this is this is what they're having. Like, we always talk about leftist infighting because we see it happening daily because we're all so tapped in. But not a lot of us live or work in conservative circles. So we don't know the kind of, like, fights they're having. But we have, like, you know, the extreme far right, the, the straight-up mask-off Nazis in this corner. And then we have the, like, the, uh, the extreme social conservatives who are like, porn is the devil and it controls your penis, right? And then we have the more progressive side of conservatism. Like, we want some LGBTQ rights, but still they've got to be kind of, like, transmedicalist in their nature because that's as soon only way to deal with this that it's a medical problem and you have to seek help and that there's only one way to go down this road and then you've got the like well i just don't really want religion uh, to be a part of this you know like it, it's interesting you talk about these issues in your church do talk about them in your church if you want to exclude people from your church fine if you want to exclude gays from getting married in your church that is a conversation between you and your church we're elders. all reasonable this all we want is dead trans kids about a political True. movement I think that all the arguments against the acceptance of homosexuality within the right are completely secular. It may ha just so happen to appeal to the to the base of that movement as Christians, but I think that Lauren and I could uh, recite several arguments that are maybe even more compelling from a completely secular perspective. Let me let me. And I hope you'll do it in church. Let me jump in. And there, uh, you know, I think it's really yeah. funny that she's quoting scripture as a liberal, <laughs> thinking that she can use it against us as Christians. Um, you know, it's like, oh, it doesn't apply to me, but maybe it'll work on you. And guess what? It doesn't work. Playing on our Christian compassion nice. and making us be tolerant and acceptive of all this diversity. You know what? That's <laughs> left us with. Pet, transgender pedophiles on there Twitter saying wow. that your daughter asked wow. that your little girl she's actually a princess. <laughs> like, she asked try to, you were just a deeply angry, hate-filled person. That's all that's all there is to it. Just like you're frightening in every single way. You know, this is like hyper Karen, like the ultimate form, the final boss, where it's like, no, no, Christianity will not save you. This is not the New Testament. This is not that hippie dippy love fest. This is old timey religion, son. This is stone your children to death that's what we're doing here and you will bow before my mic for it when i abuse her that is where we're at so you're throwing scripture at me as a liberal is not going to work you cannot play the christian compassion card on us because anymore. i will we are kill standing, you we are taking a stand for social social conservatism because it matters social issues matter and using god's word and manipulating it to try to get christians to agree with you is absolutely subversive and that's what we're struggling with in our party is subverters <laughs> you know how many kids there's some spice here white, look look at the upset you know, face giving one know? of her videos you know i know trump is a cash cow i know people love to talk about him to get their popularity but how many children saw her and looked at her and said you know what she looks really good i could do that too and started transitioning this is about the children we, they are coming oh, for yeah, our kids, and we are at a point this now where we're going to have to take a stand. This is, let's, let's be perfectly clear, my dear. This is about white cis kids. That's it, okay? When you say the children, you mean this is about the Aryan purity of the master race. That's, that's what you're truly wanting to say. The way of the LGBTQ. Will the party, you know, we already have a transgender 
man, woman, it, I don't know, in California running the Federation for Republican Women. You know, are we going to let this I wonder, because like, you know, the blaze uh, on some level probably doesn't give a fuck, but there's still, there's a handful of people behind the production of this debate right now who must be fucking sweating bullets who are just like, holy shit, can we, can we silence her? <laughs> like, we, she's like, we agree with a lot of what she's saying, but she can't say it out loud. She's saying, she's saying too much. You can't, you can't do that no more. <laughs> are we going to choose to stay with the nuclear family and support the nuclear family? Because from what I've seen from these LGBTQ activists, such as Rick, Richard Grinnell, who's an absolute pervert, he refuses to stand up for transgenders in the military. Yeah, not only did, she, did she run for Senate, she almost won. He refuses won. to stand and make a public statement that, hey, men shouldn't be in women's bathrooms. That's because they're bought, sold, and paid for by these LGBT donors who have seen an opportunity. Trump was a cash cow. He was. If you talk about him and if you are... Um, you know, had a different look or whatever, people would throw themselves at you because it's like, oh, look how inclusive we are, but we're sacrificing everything. And when it comes down to it, I choose the life, preserving the life of little children who are 15% of them For are the growing up agenda, identifying as LGBTQ um, and transgender. Uh, and we should not be giving a spotlight to, or a platform to people who operate in a lifestyle where 40% of them end up attempting suicide, you know, eventually, uh, you know, one in because of you, Be because of you, because of how horrible and vile you are. You're, you're the reason like not single handedly, but you're contributing towards it Be because of societal stigma. That's, that's on you. Yeah. You're doing it right now. Or children growing up struggling with LGBTQI gender dysphoria end up with depression, drug abuse. I think it's 80% yeah, sure. of men have a higher risk of, HIV, you know, why would I support that lifestyle? Um, why would I even fast. make excuses for that wanna, lifestyle or this is like it's wow, just unfiltered. It's basically like mostly 80s talking points. Like, you know, stuff that everyone at this point, I mean, there's new faces in the conservative wing who are kind of like, oh, ooh, yeah, honey, we, we don't do that anymore. Have you heard about the log cabin? We, we got log cabin Republicans. They're, they're very wealthy donors, like cis white men who are gay. They, they, they got a lot of money right now. They, they're, they're, they're basically at the top of the ladder in terms of the hierarchy. So we, we still want that money. Like, you got you to watch what you say here. You know, you can't can't be pulling out the old bigotry. Like, you, you, we got to we got to hone our bigotry. All right. There's there's new bigotry. Get with the get with the bigotry Overton window. This, you you got to shift it a little bit. Try to use I want to give Blair a chance to respond to respond Enable. to your statements real fast because I know Blair has has a hard out. Um, we haven't heard from Blair just on the on the statement of Lauren said Lauren is talking about you know the subversion in the party, the idea that your that your choice well, is transitioning. Well, before I, um, you know, I just want to specifically address um, what Lauren said about children maybe watching my YouTube videos and thinking that they can be like me or transition or whatever. I don't really know how much you know about me, but I'm probably the most vocal anti-children transitioning person on the internet. It's what I'm, right. almost, I, it's what well, I, I, I let you speak. The best thing you can do for us is I, grow out your mustache and tell people not to live like you. That is God the best thing damn. you can do to help us. God Christ damn. love, Christ love, wafting off Lauren, Christ love. Go at it guys. <laughs> I think actually okay. to close on the biblical point. <laughs> Go at it. <laughs> You fucking ghoul, Don King over here. Excellent. This is wonderful. Yeah, firsthand bigotry. I'm just gonna turn up your mics and just like, yeah, no, this is ratings gold. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. I like, the first I thing I did want to say is the vindication point. of Lauren's voice comes point. very clearly, and the fact that we have a liberal on here who is personally a liberal and ideologically a liberal, though feels as though she can manifest that by voting for Republicans. And so I think that really speaks to how far our party has deviated in the last 50 years to where now there are people who are personally liberal who feel as though their views can be reflected by voting for Republicans. And to close on the biblical topic, there's this misconception that like Jesus just said that we should be like vaguely nice to each other. As far as judgment goes, we are called as Christians not to judge people individually. Like we cannot look at you and make a moral declaration like you are good or you are bad. That's not our position. However, we are called quite explicitly to judge the actions of people so as to maintain a moral and civilized society. And so we need to keep that social pressure on people like you actually can't behave in this way or that way. And that's how we maintain a civilized and virtuous society. And we are called throughout the Bible to do that quite explicitly. Okay, but and, I mean, historically, there's been no more civilized societies than Christian societies. There was law and there was order. And there was most importantly, slaves, lots of slaves, thousands and thousands of slaves. And it was so decreed in the Bible and how to treat them.
There was explicit rules on how you should treat your slaves and, and how slavery should be dictated. And it's odd, you know, it's almost as if society moved past thousands and thousands of year old scriptures. But no, not for old jo John Doyle, not for Lauren. Well, I mean, she's she's straight up back 2,000 years ago. Blair, can you please respond? All right, well, I never that? finished my crazy. point, so I would just like to say, as I said earlier, whether anyone on this panel likes it or wants to acknowledge it, there is a really huge chunk of LGBT people who are very much against ideas like children transitioning, like uh, trans women in biological women's sports um, oh, and all of the Blair. ideas that are, you know, Blair. hot talking points, but they're very real at the same time. So um, I don't think many kids would look at my YouTube videos and want to do anything like me because I explicitly have been very known for saying that it's not a glamorous lifestyle, that it's difficult and that children- It's like she has to play this dance just to be at the right level of acceptability for basically conservative tokenization. Like that's it. Like, I, I, I have these beliefs and these beliefs as well, but as long as I just hit that sweet spot, as long as that I can continue to maintain my profitability and, uh, you know, build up this empire. ...be out allowed to transition because it can often be a mistake that really damages their life. So, I don't know, I just felt like that was a false premise. And again, I I would like to agree with Carlin on that. It wasn't a false premise. Like I said, if you want to help us, tell people not to live like you. Wow. Watch my videos and come to that conclusion when I say not to, and I advocate against it. I think that there are a lot of- Do you not understand, Blair? There's there's no middle ground with her. There's You're, you're not going to bridge that gap, right? You're, you're not going to be able to be like, well, you should understand that Like I, I actually believe a lot of the same things as you, okay? I, I do not believe that trans women should be in sports. I I, I don't believe in, in uh, hormone therapy for children. I like, I you know, the same, and like, she does not want you to exist, all right? That's like, that's the level of hatred you're dealing with right now. There is, there is no middle ground here, okay? She's like, this is pretty much, you're dealing with like a slave owner. Like this is a fucking, she lives on the plantation. That's the mentality that is going on there. There is, there is no like, oh, okay, I understand. Well, now, now the gap has been bridged. Trans people online that you could argue, maybe someone looks at their videos, children and, and wants to do a certain thing, but I'm very much against it. If anything, people who support children transitioning or kids who want to transition hate me. So, um, but I also would like to say, it's normal. That's normal. That's not the thing. I do agree with Carlin in the sense. See, like you don't even have to like guess. She's just saying it. Like you know, there is no mask. It's the only thing I can give her credit for. Like it's it's just it's right there on the surface. You know, the bigotry is out and proud. If you guys do want to wield power and enact the socially conservative changes that you want, you do have to win elections. And telling people that they don't have a place to vote in your direction or that they don't have a place in your party isn't the way to win elections. So. I guess if the topic is the future of the right, I think the future of the right's already settled. Um, it's Trump, and that's not an ideology that tells people they're not allowed to come over. If anything, it's an ideology that welcomes people to come over. So, okay, it's so kind of already jump, over, actually. But. Before we jump any further, I want to let you guys know something. It's very important. As you can see, a lot of people in this country disagree right now. We cannot seem to come to common ground on a lot of things, which is why people see the instability in the stock market. We had things like the power grid fail here in Texas, which is why I want to tell you about my Patriot Supply, which you can find at preparewithelijah.com. <laughs> you know, right now, no matter what you think, bad things can happen. We lost power at my house. We, the grocery stores got taken for all their food, which is why I really want my followers to know that more than your politics, please take your safety into it's, regard. And please holy shit. Always a matter of time. Of that lasts <laughs> many, many years. I think up to 20. Yeah, please, please put the photo of me looking like I'm ready to receive my slop, sir. <laughs> Fucking, can you can you edit out the mic and put a bucket or a trough? <laughs> Five years, absolutely. Crazy. If you're not well stocked with emergency food and clean water, you need to get started right away. Man, the company that without I fail, is my every one supply. of them. Because Every one of them. Week supply of emergency food. Yeah, last week. Oh, God. He's going to win those people over hasn't actually worked. I mean, even his support. Oh, that was good. I needed that. I, I think we all needed that. That was a palate cleanse. All right. Like, we, this is a lot of bigotry to get through. We don't normally deal with, like, just out and proud alt writers, fucking, you know, top right corner Nazi shit. Normally, there's a lot of masking. There's a lot more a lot more masks on. So, so this has been intense. All right. It's been draining, but that was, that was good. That was, uh, again, that's like a little. Little interlude, all right? Now, now we return. It was not like statistically significant, nor was there a statistic improvement or statistically significant improvement. And so when any 
political operation is happening. You know, you have a certain volume of discussion and resources that you can expend on different things. And so if you're going to waste those resources, which it is a waste on people who aren't going to vote for you anyway, because they've basically been brainwashed into hating you because we don't control the narratives and we don't control the institutions, the, the place that you want to be pouring those resources into would be on the issues that you won the election based on in the first place, which would be immigration, which would be free trade, and which would be foreign policy. It has very little to do with appealing to different uh, interest groups and hoping that they come over, whether that's you know black people or gay people or transgender people. These are all things that Jared Kushner lobbied for because he thought that they would be effective in creating the sort of big tent movement, which I, I mean, obviously didn't help him too, too much throughout the administration, but uh, that also wasn't why he was elected in the first place anyways. Because if you look, even demographically, the people who are most likely to vote for Trump are also most likely to be socially conservative. So it is very clear that if we want to keep Trumpism going, if we want to keep the Trump train going, then the way to do that isn't by appealing to these issues, it's by appealing to the issues that got him into power in the first place. And then when we take the country back, then, you know, we can have these other debates once we actually wield power. But right now we're just getting totally crushed. So we don't have time to waste resources on anything that hasn't been proven to be effective. Carlin? Can I, Con, oh, Blair, Blair has her hand up. Blair has ahead. talked less. I was just going to say, I actually completely agree with uh, John that pandering to minority groups definitely didn't do Trump any favors. I think that the media completely controls the narratives. It doesn't matter. He could save, like, I don't know, a little person of color who's also trans out of a burning building and the media would not care. Um, but that's all the more reason to... I don't think you have to pander. I think you just don't have to try to exclude people. I think that that just loses votes. Um, and so, again, it just goes back to you. you guys can't wield any of this power you say you want to wield if you're not going to win elections. You're just not. And um, I don't know. I just think it's it's just kind of silly to go on about this argument that certain people need to be excluded because all it's doing is telling people not to vote for you. I and actually if, agree with that. If, if it keeps going back to like, we need to win, we need to win. <laughs> Saying you can't that's, vote for us or you don't That's not good. Vote. That's not good. They're, they're, they're bridging the gap right now. And right now, even like I hate porn because it makes my penis feel weird. John Doyle in the corner is like, oh, oh, that, she, she actually has a point here. This 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 could be bad. And the party isn't. I don't see the winning tactic of that. I mean, I don't think that the social conservative movement is going to necessarily grow stronger to the point where you wouldn't need. And also what you said about um, LGBT votes not having a statistical raise. I believe they did double, obviously it's still a small community, but they did, it did double from 2016. So clearly there is a shift happening. I think it was 14% in 2016 and probably like 1% every other election before that. And it was like 28% in 2020. So yeah, you know, minority groups don't necessarily win elections now. Over time, they very well could. Can I just, uh, let, me, let me move to Lauren. 900,000 votes, yeah. 900,000 people nationally came out uh, from the LGBTQ community and voted for President Trump. We've done the math. Um, it was absolutely not beneficial for all the money we spent when we could have been going after the working class, the white working class, the Christian working class. Uh Again, no, no, no masks, right? It's, <laughs> she's, she's very, she's very upfront. She's very forward about her beliefs. I do agree. Religiously, uh, yeah, we the spent whites. waste many resources. Um, so the lie that we have to be a big tent in order to win and we have to be uh, inclusive. You know, like I said, there is a party for free market capitalism and transgenderism and liberalism. That's called the Libertarian Party. Why don't you join them? We do not need you. You are doing nothing but hurting us. You are hurting the Christian vote by creating a platform for yourself saying, this is Trump's, Trumpism. This is Trumpism. You know, we should have never glorified this in the first place while we are losing everything on social issues. We lose every single time. You know, we are influencing, you know, public opinion matters and we are influencing our own elected officials to not take a stand on issues. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to put forward an argument that you are hurting the party way more than someone saying that we need to form a broad coalition. I don't know how much money you're talking about that was spent on a right wing appeal to the LGBTQ community. I would love to see the numbers on that. Just off the top of my head, I'm guessing it's not very significant because why would they? If anything, they were putting money into like key state demographics and trying to do what they usually do, which is enrage the right wing white Christian conservative base. They were doing the old play-by-play -play, uh, piece by piece. So such as transgenderism, uh, LGBTQ Gosh, education, drag queen story hour. They are saying nothing. We have created a cowardly uh, elected class within our party. You know, so it is not helping us. There is absolutely no electoral benefit. There's no social benefit. Um, you know, and if, you, like I said, if you are a gunslinging 
freedom love in person, absolutely, we'd love to have you come vote for us. But should you be having a say in influencing the party? Should you have um, an opinion? It's, well, yeah, it's basically, yeah, we'd love your vote. So we want your vote. We just don't want to have to see you. I don't want to have to look upon you with my godly eyes, you know, so just just don't don't show your faces. Don't don't show yourselves publicly. But yeah, of course, you know, vote like, you know, we love your vote. Just not you. We don't love you. Uh, that, you know, like Jared Kushner was the one who did push the LGBTQ agenda, mass migration. Really um, and those Jared were the Kushner, things eh? that, you know, mass migration was something that Trump addressed in 2016. And that's what got the white working class out to vote for him. You know, so there are plenty of votes out there for us to get. But it doesn't come with compromising. We don't get those 15 million unregistered Christian voters to get, rid of, get them registered to vote and out to vote for us by glorifying the LGBT community. Congress shall make where... no law respecting an establishment of religion. I don't know why Lauren's so against the First Amendment. I think the First Amendment's pretty great. I also think the Second Amendment's pretty great too because it protects the first. <laughs> and these are the things that we should actually be conserving and we can't do that if we can't win oh, elections. Oh, so she actually, sorry, she was on the right side of that argument. I didn't know that she was defending the First Amendment. No, she's correct. I just, I, I, I don't want that to infiltrate the discussion, so. John, push back against it. Say say something about how the First Amendment would protect porn or something there like is, that. Lauren, that every single problem you have with the LGBT movement right now, from, from giving hormones to kids, medical transition, whatever, this was all caused by the right losing the culture war 30 years ago when they tried to legislate their religion. That is why we're currently experiencing this today. The only way to come back and conserve whatever it is you want to conserve is by winning elections. And the fact of the matter is, it's not just people like Blair who vote based on LGBT issues. I am straight as an arrow. I'm married to a dude. Between the two of us, I'm the one that's actually married with the family. And so I will say that I absolutely will not vote for a party that treats LGBT people like they are subhuman. I won't do it. Part of the reason that Trump won my vote is because he does not care. He promotes people. He doesn't promote <laughs> sexualities. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so first of all. Oh, here. yes, yes. Later up, later up. I'm ready. I'm ready. Go, go Super Saiyan. I, I want to see it. Come on. Using issues again on me that you don't apply for yourself. So, uh, Dr. Carl here was the first one to celebrate me being Harlan. From Quinn, Harlan. banned from Twitter. Um, she was so excited to see that my voice had been silenced. So freedom of speech for thee, but not for me. Um, absolutely. So, you know, <laughs> you fucking wretch. The guy in the corner is like, mm, content, oh, such content, much wow. Oh, oh, what have I done here? <laughs> Um, well, I celebrated that you were banned on Twitter because you repeatedly I, tweeted that my husband should be deported, Lauren. And he's now a legal I'm alien. Thrilled. No, he's your not. Husband, he has a permanent green card. I am now thrilled that I don't have to hear you call for my husband to be deported on Twitter, who has had a permanent green card for the last six years. He came into our country illegally. He broke our laws. He did and not then do it married correctly. an American. How lucky oh, is he? Go back. He has to go back. I'm sorry, no, he Dr. doesn't, Carl. honey. That's not how laws work. It's not how laws work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have a husband and you don't, Lauren. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Anybody, anyone want to respond? You guys can keep going. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they can. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Content is king, after all. Keep going. <laughs> Blair's like, I'm Are you going to keep going? Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm in early recovery. So, you know, I've only been clean three years. Uh, you know, myself getting in toxic relationships is what kept, you know, me relapsing. So, you know, I'm just doing it with wisdom this time. I'm dating. I'm, but my intention is to get married and have children eventually. But I certainly will not be marrying an illegal alien uh, to give him his green card. So, you know, uh, I hopefully so will find an American man. I will, I, I I will find that. an American man. You'll be pleased to know we had several interviews with ICE and they, they, they blessed our marriage. Really? Even though he was an illegal and didn't yeah. come the right way? That's crazy. Green card, honey. Green wow, card. We're going to we're gonna have to reinvestigate let's ICE. Go, let's go to Blair. But you know what? Here's the, here's the thing, though. Like, <laughs> we can keep talking about my husband, all she wants to talk about him. But the fact of the matter is, my husband ain't going to win us an election. Votes are going to win us elections. I don't know why we're so focused on these issues that are driving people away from voting for things like conserving the First Amendment, conserving the Second Amendment. That's really what I would like to have the conversation about. You don't even about. like the no First Amendment. You don't even like members. it. So well, why are you... Why are you uh, Blair wanted to chime in. Let's, let's cut. I'm, like guys, I'm going to cut you guys off. I'm cutting you off, Blair. I, I, I want to, Blair, let me hear you, what you're going to say. Oh, I was just going to say, um, I think that there's a little bit of a tit for tat here, but I will say, Lauren, um, 
you said that Carlin was celebrating you being the apostle. Oh, gee, Floda, how wrong you are. Catholics and Christians are two different entities, and they do not feel the same way towards Catholics that they do towards the white evangelical Christian race. Oh, no, no, they're quite different. They had a lot of trouble with JFK for that very reason. He was going to become the first Catholic president, but that alone was enough to try and sink his entire career and campaign, lo and behold. At least times have changed a little bit now. I did see that, and I personally disagree with Carlin for doing that. I didn't. I don't like people being banned off Twitter or do platforms. Um, but I will say you open this up with saying that I shouldn't be given a platform and that I shouldn't have a say in the party or in, you know, so I think there's a little bit of it to go around. I think everyone should probably just respect each other a little bit more. No, I didn't say you should be deplatformed from your voice. I was saying that you should not have a platform within a party who stands for traditional marriage because that is just opposing itself. You know, it makes no sense. Also, when you cannot deny that your people are the ones that are reading dressed in drag to kids at my, our taxpayers' expense. And I'm just curious, to what extent am I forced, am I going to be forced to participate in your fetish or delusion while our children are being targeted for pedophilia openly, you know? So, you know, no, I don't want to give a platform to that lifestyle. Here's and those the, are your people. Here's the platform, platform. There is, is there a mod to this debate? No, 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 no. There's, there's just a guy on the sidelines who is just having the time of his life. All he sees is dollar bills. He sees four dollar bills in front of him right now. And all of them are, oh, they're giving them juicy, juicy algorithms. All right. Okay. There is, and I think this may be something that you might not be aware of or people who are not you know, closer to the LGBT community and knowing the inner workings, that there's actually a huge divide from people who- It doesn't so matter. It's a package deal. It all comes together. Mm, I disagree. I think that uh, there's a huge divide within the community as from people who do support things like Drag Queen Story Hour, one of the things I've been very vocal against, um, against children transitioning. So I don't think it's a monolith. I don't think any group is a monolith. The same way that people, the, the right wing is not a monolith of just people who believe, you know, in a biblical, you know, definition of conservatism and people who don't. Um, and I think that there's a really big missed opportunity for the right in the sense that I think LGBT people are actually the best warriors against gender ideology and, mm. you know, and seeing and seeing children being read to by half naked so drag angry. queens and, and so children angry. going under hormone therapy at 12. I think that people that are from that community coming and speaking out against it do a lot more, a, a lot better of a job at trying to stop it than people who are on the outside. Because at the end of the day, um, yeah. Lauren, you could make it's, it part of your it's, platform. It's hard to pick, right? Like, uh, who is exactly, like, they're always trying to out-ghoul each other in this, it seems. Those things, and even Carlin, you guys could talk yeah. about Yeah, and that's also it, awesome never, that she's, like, she's advocating for the definition of being a monolith, while at the same time saying, we're not a monolith, okay? I just basically want to be, like, a, a fundamentalist in this regard. It's simply, the way it works, it's never going to be heard as loud as someone like myself or a gay person coming out of the community. And so I think that when you have, I would venture to say the majority of LGBT people who disagree with those things, when they feel like they can't yeah, top right is top right. speak out against it, because True. what happens is the right will say, okay, you can speak out against it, but you still get no voice in the party. You're still disgusting. You're still a freak. They don't want to, then they end up staying on the left. And it makes it appear as though all of us agree with those things. But in reality, oftentimes we feel politically homeless, like we don't have a voice over here. And we have to pretend to be leftists or pretend to be along with these things because we don't have a, a political home. Well, so absolutely. again, I think, well, so I just want to, one second, just one last yeah. thing. So again, I think just in general, the overall point of what I think is that you don't benefit from turning people off from voting for you. You just don't. Okay. Well, listen, here's the deal. Your whole lifestyle really opens the door to everything that you claim to stand against. Now, I'm not really sure if you really stand against the transitioning of children or tra drag queen story hour, or if it's just public opinion. Is against you. Or, if public, or if public opinion is against you because public opinion matters. You know, I don't really know what's really in your heart, but when you walk out a lifestyle that introduces that to children, I mean, it's there. It is your people. It is part of, you know, that's part of the package deal. It is spearheaded by the LGBTQ <laughs> movement. Just because you take a normal stance? No, it's not. You, like, you don't speak for white people. <laughs> you know, like, not all white people are Nazis because you're a Nazi. That's not how that works. You, you don't get to do that. On something, everybody should be opposed to grown men going into young girls' locker rooms or bathrooms. You know, every, it's, that doesn't make you special. It makes you normal. You know, and just because you dress up as a woman 
does not mean that you have a special opinion on something that everybody should oppose. Okay, so I'm so, not claiming to be special. I'm just a person that shares my opinions online. And what I'm just trying to tell you is that it's a lot more people than you think within the community, the LGBT community, that agree with me and think the exact same way, you, not the exact same way, but on the more radical ideas like children, everything to do with children. Um, it's all the and same. There, I mean, you can sit here and you can insist that it's a monolith and insist that we all think that way and that it is a package deal, but it's really not, especially considering gender ideology and, and how it has manifested now and taken over culture and been popularized. It started a lot long, it started well after the existence and acknowledgement of gay people or transgender people. Transgenderism used to be a purely medical issue that was treated on a purely medical basis. Gender ideology that we see on college campuses and that oftentimes it's communists spreading it. I, I get it, you're transmedicalist So if, I, I don't, I think that they are two separate things. She's a biological essentialist as well. Okay, so let me, let me, let me, uh, I have to move the conversation on because I know that Blair, again, has a hard out. And so I kind of want to give Carlin and, and John a chance to respond to this. So as we're wrapping this up with the big tent, with the idea of the place with gays, I, I don't want to get your opinion wrong, Lauren. So I'm just, if you can give me a brief response to this, do you, do you believe that we should exclude the LGBT influence from the right wing and reestablish sort of like a Christian party? Can you give me your summary in under a minute? Yeah. So, uh, certainly Thanks for your in trouble. conclusion. Uh, the LGBTQ community has no... <laughs> I am Adolf Hitler. <laughs> NC. <laughs> ...platform should have no influence on the party that was based on traditional marriage. Opposing gay marriage still is our platform. That hasn't changed. But we are going to have to vote on it again soon. You know, are we going to be the party moving forward? Are we going to be the party that compromises on our values uh, that got us this far? Or are we going to stand firm on issues like family, restoring the nuclear family, getting dads back into the home, uh, re-legalizing conversion therapy, which they have stripped parental rights where children now can't even go. I was get right. Wow. I said that at the start. I mean, that's that was really easy call out that this is going to be part of the package deal. But yeah, of course she wants conversion therapy. It makes so Yeah. Like uh, she wants to torture children, essentially. That's 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 what she's been all about since the beginning of this. If they choose to change their mind while struggling with gender dysphoria, you know, the only path forward with this, with this LGBTQ agenda is stripping parents of their rights. Parents are being villainized for not wanting to transition their children. They're getting their ha they're having their children taken away from them. You know, so it is not a lifestyle that should be included um, in the Re Republican Party, and it's not something we need either. Electorally, it hurts us. Okay, Lauren, and then uh, Carlin, let me give you so in under a minute. Can you wrap up your conclusion on this as well? Yeah, this is about attracting as many people to the movement as we possibly can. I would like everyone who believes in freedom of speech, who believes in protecting the Second Amendment, who believes in protecting all our individual liberties to come to the movement. And I think it's rather ironic that people like Lauren talk about treasuring the traditional family when she was campaigning on Twitter to have my husband of almost 10 years supported. So protect yeah. your traditional family, but break up mine. I would like to welcome everyone into this movement, including my husband, who will be starting the process of becoming a U.S. citizen. A Wow, I mean, I really don't like her, but like I haven't really found anything she said this entire time to be that objectionable. It's terrible. It's one of the worst things about this. I, I just feel gross saying this, but like you've you've kind of you've kind of been on point a few times. A later on this year, and when he does, when he does, low he bar, will be voting I know. in the MAGA movement, really low bar. just like me. Yeah, John. Uh, yeah. I think that Lauren summarizes it pretty well. We're not saying that we're going to turn these people away. We're just saying that their issues can't be represented in our party platform because their issues fundamentally represent something that is deviant from the traditional American society. And these There's allusions to the Constitution as though it's an argument about, about religion, I think, is kind of disingenuous because, like I said earlier, Lauren, I, I think, I mean, speaking for myself, I was against these sort of issues before I really came into the faith. But I think it's important to put that into context uh, that like when the Constitution was written, you know, you mentioned the First Amendment and the Second Amendment, even the founding fathers like Thomas Jefferson, who would now be considered to be like the most radically pro-freedom of the founding fathers, when he was governor of Virginia, he wanted the punishment for sodomy to be the equivalent to the punishment for uh, punishment for rape, because these were always considered to be deviant acts that were against and went against the social fabric of the nation and the moral fabric of the nation. So if you want to come vote for Republicans nominally, that's great, but you can't have your issue Issues represented because all of your issues, whether that be uh, two men getting married or, or it's just like it all represents something that is the total enshrinement of equality, which is fundamentally a left wing idea. And it always has been.
And then Blair, uh, give us your conclusion. I guess my conclusion would be that this is all kind of silly. You have half the country unconstitutionally locked down, people dying alone right now, can't go to funerals, um, people out of work, like the entirety of the country living with almost no dignity out of all of a sudden we have lockdowns and just so much stuff to worry about. We're bombing Syria, you know, um, I just can't, I can't wrap my head around this being even remotely close to the most important conversation happening on the right or anywhere. Um, and I think that it's also kind of just over. Um, I guess I'm just kind of saying what I've already said before, but um, Trumpism is the future and Trumpism isn't, unfortunately, what you've seen with, with Lauren and with John today. Um, and they're certainly free to advocate for um, an increase or a rise in social conservatism. But speaking for um, a really big chunk of my generation, which are going to be the yeah, people running is. things very soon, and they already are, <laughs> um, you know, what Carlin said earlier about we grew up in a time where we were very, very turned off in social conservatism and a lot of the more radical ideas that you're seeing now um, in regards to gender ideology, wokeness, it is the pendulum effect of social conservatism. It is. It, it was, you know, I grew up in a time where when I was five years old, I was naturally feminine getting beat up by little Christian kids in my school. And um that was kind of the era that we were in and things changed and people got disgusted with that. And the pendulum is now to the point where now you have people being disgusted with the opposite end. So um, I guess Big Ten Party is the future. Not a huge time. You don't have to compromise on everything, but right. you do have to acknowledge the anomalies in people and that everyone's different. And if you're going to be searching for, you know, pure, perfect ideologically consistent 100% of the time people to only be part of your movement, you're not really going to find many of them, okay. especially because a lot of these social concerns. It's like, you know, you, you have to understand, you have to be accepting enough to let us in, even though I myself vilify large sections of the trans community. It's on Twitter that, that you know, love to talk about LGBT people being excluded. Um, a lot of them are secretly gay behind the scenes. All right, so. well, I got to cut, I gotta cut <laughs> you off there. That's a loaded <laughs> statement. I know, John, people want to respond to that stuff. <laughs> Maybe you are secretly gay behind the scenes. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're super straight. It doesn't really matter. Guys, I want to hear your thoughts below in the comments. We could kind of go on with this conversation forever. And I want to let you know something. Obviously, you know, Carlin and Lauren and Blair and John coming on. This is something that we don't get a lot of. Um, and before I wrap things up, I just want uh, to let you guys know that you can follow Carlin. You can follow Lauren. You can follow Blair and John. All their links to their social media is in the description. If you so hate them, if you love he them. definitely just, yeah, okay. I'm glad other people picked up on that. Yeah, so... The super straight and the super straight movement is an alt right movement. That's no surprise. The uh, the acronym is SS, um, so that should tip you off right there. But it was it was propagated on 4chan message boards, and the idea being that they could try and drive a wedge inside the LGBTQ community and try to make people who also advocated for and support the LGBTQ community as uh, themselves being bigots to try and flip the whole thing on their head. And it uses that old adage of uh, basically genital preference. Uh, as a way to say how straight you truly are. Like, I'm so straight, I'm super straight. And I'm so straight that I won't even be with a woman who's trans, is, is the idea behind the whole thing. Uh, ridiculous, and obviously it's it's coded messaging for the alt-right. Please don't harass them, but just uh, follow them if you like them. And I also want to give uh, thank them so much for coming on today and for being willing to do what many people are not. If you guys liked this, I encourage you, DM them, comment, start conversations. They'll probably block you if you're a troll. But I mean, like, genuinely engage with them and follow them if you like what they believe. And most importantly, if you really liked this, please continue to support this show at blazetv.com slash Elijah. <laughs> Thanks, Elijah, for that. Wow. That was that was wild, chat. What a what an experience. What a what a thing to sit through, you know? This is the moderator the whole time. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If Brian Lefebvre is dead, then who the hell are these people? Just a couple of people who totally got off, bro. What? You did? Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. during this? Woohoo! Big time, yeah. Oh yeah, I got off a couple times when we were watching the video presentation, then when he called me out for not being Brian Lefebvre, woo, that got me big that time. Did it? Oh man, did I get off. Yeah, and then he showed the finger, that was the big one. The dead finger got you off. That was the climax, really. I am really. so confused. Oh my god, it was amazing. It's mostly sexual. God damn you, okay? You know, <laughs> Just a couple of people who totally just got off. Well, that was an experience, all right. 
Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Can you do the thing, you know, that uh, thumbs up and comment and all those things that help us out in the algorithm that controls every aspect of our lives? Also, if you happen to have a Facebook account, um, can you can you delete it? Like, just just delete it. You should probably delete your Facebook account because it's just it's not a great company. But hey, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I understand. And uh, could you also go to Facebook.com slash The Surf Times then and uh, give us a little like and a follow. We're just trying to push back against the fact that people like Ben Shapiro happen to dominate the platform entirely. And when everyone asks, why do older generations believe the things they believe? One of the problems is the majority of them on social media use Facebook. So to counter that, uh, we're just going to be on there too now. Also, if you happen to have a union or a worker co-op or even a leftist project podcast website, Zoom, MySpace, it doesn't matter. We will advertise it for free on this channel. All you got to do is go to wearesurfs.com and use the forms that we got there, wearesurfs.com. Thanks, everybody. To our glorious gods, Xander Corvus and I'm Rav, may you shower us with glory and, and smite our enemies. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we serve at your leisure, your grace. To our lords, Toe Fox, Bisexual Black Gamer, Jimothy K. Meeble Beeps Jr., Ryan Lubin, Trevor R., Jeffrey Lamb, Alexander Thaler, and Hans Josephin, we shall carry your banner high into the fields of battle. To our Knights of the Round Table, Timothy Hart, Trevor Janis, Lemmy101, Anthropophagic, Saren42, Chronic de Hemphog, Kale Kotka, The Great Pudini, Phone Jenny, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, J. Fraser Cartwright, Thomas Barrington, Jimmy Big Nuts, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chitoro, Gufalankius, Zach Christensen, Nicholas Marks, Gopi, Josh Mickelson, Melissa Murphy, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, Constance Joyce Lacheris, 